hi guys welcome back to the channel today we're going to do a short condensed version of changing out your wick i'm going to move pretty fast paced through it this will give you a pretty good idea of what you need to be doing um, if you need the longer version i'm going to put the link down in the description where i literally break everything down for you um, but today i need to move along because i'm on a time crunch so uh, this should probably take me about 15 20 minutes if that um, but the video may seem a little longer depending on what parts I stretch out. All right, to get started, I got a bunch of things laid out. I'm gonna need a flathead screwdriver to be able to get two bolts off of the side of the heater. There's one here and there's one on the other side. I've already removed them for uh, tying purposes. I have a pair of gloves, so when I pull the wick out, I'm not getting all the kerosene all over my fingers. I have a toothbrush so I can do a quick clean out around the rubber seal that um, holds all the kerosene in. I've got a pair of pliers because there are some wing nuts that I really have a tough time with. Um, so I have some pliers to help me out with that. I have my re uh, wick replacement. Uh, this is the Dynaglo brand uh, model number RW16CP. And this is also the one that comes with the igniter. So that's what that little piece says there. And I'm also changing that today as I go along. And then lastly, I have a plastic bag ready to go to discard the wick. Um, it is much easier to have all of this stuff out ready to go before you even open it up. That way you're not trying to rush. You got a dripping wick or, you know, you don't want to set it down on something crazy and yada, yada, yada. So have your stuff ready to go. You also notice I have a very old towel laying down on the floor. So if I do drip a little kerosene, I'm not going to freak out. Um, definitely don't do this on wood floors um, because wood, as you already know, will absorb fuel and it's just not, not cool. Not cool with that. I do have my instruction book open, but um, I pretty well know how to do this on the back of my hand. But just in case I forget a little piece, I've got that right open. I've got that open and ready to go. All right, moving on. The cage, I've already removed the bolts. I'm actually gonna do myself a favor and stick them in my pocket um, so I don't lose them. Now that the bolts are off, I can literally take the cage off in one piece. So once that's off, that's it. Set it off to the side, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this silver ring off. And I'm just going to set that on top of there. Now, this is where you need to pay attention to what you're doing, okay? I need to remove this black piece, okay? And in order to do that, I need to pull the knob off. So, off comes the knob, okay? And now I'm going to lift the back of it up. And I have to slide it forward to clear all of the knob buttons so I don't break anything. The other thing is, it is connected by chain to your fuel cap. So I'm just literally going to set this like this off to the side. And that's it. I'm not going to touch that piece again, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my handy dandy old toothbrush. Don't worry, it's been rinsed off. And I'm gonna brush off uh, a lot of this dirt, nastiness, anything I can't get to with my fingers and a, and a piece of paper towel. And I'm just gonna do a quick wipe around. Do be careful when you're going around the battery box because you don't want to break any wires. See, that's nasty. That's dust and cat hair. Okay, so with my pliers, I'm gonna loosen up all of my wing nuts. Can you see the wing nut? Mm -hmm. There it is. So there's four of these, okay? And I can't remember if I had them hand tight or if I did them pretty snug with the pliers, but I got my pliers ready to go. 
Okay, once you have all of your wing nuts off, there's four of them. Stick them in your pocket so you don't lose them. <laughs> okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to remove this entire piece. So, here we go. Now, you may have to wiggle it and slide your fingers underneath it. See how it's coming up? Okay. Now, it's going to be snug because your wick is attached to it. There it is. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it upside down on my bag. Okay. And I'm going to slide my gloves on because kerosene stinks. And that glove, I'm just going to double my glove because I just ripped that one. These are just cheap gloves. It's just something to keep the fuel off of my hand so it's not sitting there stinking. Okay. All right. Into the wick. All right. Now, my fuel container was full. That, I probably should have burned it off first, but... Uh, I'm having a lot of problems with this wick. So I'm going to take the wick and I'm just going to kind of fold it in a little bit, just like this. And I'm going to tuck it down. This cover has teeth on it. Can you get, get in there, Shaylee, so we can show them the teeth? Okay, so when you're removing the wick, be really careful so you don't catch the back of your hand or your fingers on those teeth, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to twist this cover, and now I'm going to twist it off, okay? And I'm just going to set it aside, okay? Now for the actual wick piece, I'm going to continue folding the wick over, and can you get that camera in here and show them there's pins on this wick, okay? So not only do I need to move the pin out, but I also need to make sure I'm not catching my hand on those sharp teeth that are inside there, okay? So I'm just going to kind of pull the wick off, okay? Once it is off, there it is. There's the wick, okay? And now I'm just going to lift up this tray, and I'm going to set the wick in here. The tray's pretty dry for the most part. I'm going to take my gloves and I'm going to do it EMT style. And voila, it's in the bag. You can discard your wick. And I would suggest getting it right out of the house or get it away from you um, quickly because it does stink. <laughs> I'm going to take my toothbrush. This is something really important. This seal keeps your kerosene from sloshing out. Okay, so when you're changing your wick, it's a really, really smart idea to take a look at your rubber seal and just make sure that it's not dry rotted, it's not cracked, broken, nothing crazy going on with it. Dust it off, clean it up. Okay, this is a good opportunity to get your toothbrush in there, wipe everything down. Okay, I know I sound repetitive at this part, but cleanliness is a good thing when it comes to these heaters. Now that I know my rubber seal is good, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move into um, replacing the actual wick. Um, okay, so pulling out my igniter uh, glow plug. I'm just going to set that off to the side. And here is our beautiful wick. Now, this is the top. This is the bottom. The bottom is going to slide over the cylinder. You're going to notice that there is a slit on the bottom of the wick. It is supposed to be there. That does not mean it's defective, okay? It's supposed to be there, and the reason for that, I'm just going to give you a brief demonstration, is because it makes it possible to easily slide over the cylinder where it's going to go. Okay, without that slit, your life would be miserable trying to put this thing on. Okay, for demonstration purposes, I am going to pull the sleeve out. 
Okay, so there's this metal piece. Be super careful because it is sharp, okay? And I'm going to pull this piece out just to line everything <clears throat> up so that you guys have a really good idea of what I'm doing. And there's usually the word up or down. Uh, there it is. It says it's, there's an engraving on it that shows you which direction is up. So when I put my wick in here, I have to make sure the top is facing up. Okay, so there are pins on your wick. There are pinholes on the side of your sleeve. So obviously, you're going to want to make sure your pinholes are going in the correct area. Sometimes the easiest way to do it is to fold it and then slide it in and get your pins where they belong. Okay. Be real careful, folks, when you are putting this in because there are teeth all over this um, metal sleeve and they will catch you if you're not paying attention and they hurt. You have your wick in and you've pressed it around and you have your perfect circle. Now we're going to go ahead and insert it in here. See these little holes right there? Your pins have to line up in the holes there's three of them okay if you do not line them up correctly your wick will not move up and down when you turn the adjuster knob okay once you get one of your pins in you're golden you'll be able to do the other two much easier okay so I have to go to the other side now and make sure my pin there it is, there's another pen. I'm gonna turn this around and see the pinhole, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna stick my hand in the center, make sure that your wick is still attached in the inside. Flip it around, double check it. You should have a per perfect circle going on there. All right, now that you got to this point, we are going to just gently tuck this in, okay? So it's like this. And we're going to replace this cover, okay? Now, I don't know if Shaylee can get it with the camera, but it says close with an arrow and open. And if you notice on the actual unit, there's little, I don't know, like little bumps of metal right there. There's one there and there's one there on the other side. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting this back on, these are supposed to go over those little bumps. Okay. So just pay attention to where you're putting it. Once you have it lined up, obviously I need to go to, what is that, the left? <laughs> to tighten it. All right, now that that part is on, I see I got a lot of junk. What is that? That's a dead bug. That's great. <laughs> you find all kinds of things when you're cleaning your heater. Now that that part is on, we're gonna lift the wick up, okay? And I'm gonna let those teeth grab the cotton, okay? And this is where the super tricky part comes. Now I have to flip this unit over I have to maintain the wick in the upper position and I have to slide it over the cylinder. So if you have an extra set of hands, uh, another person that could help you, um, this is where you could really use their help. Okay, if not, you can always get a pair of pliers or grips or something to hold that pendulum in place so it keeps it from rocking so that your knob will stay in the upward position. Okay. Hey, Gus, we're going to borrow your hands, honey. Okay. The knob assembly has to go in the front in between the fuel gauge and the fuel cap. Okay. This part needs to be sitting right here. If you put it on backwards, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> what did I do? And yeah, you'll have to tear it all apart. It's a headache. So, I am going to borrow Augustus, and he is going to help me. Okay, so I have my wick in the upward position where I need it. Okay, Augustus is going to hold that pendulum for me. Okay, 
And all right, we're just gonna move the towel here. Okay, he is gonna walk with me. And we are going to work the wick over the cylinder, okay? Now I could let go of the black handle since he's holding the pendulum, but we're just gonna work together on this to make sure that it doesn't go down. Because if it goes down, it's a headache to fix it. Okay, so Shaylee's gonna get in the inside here. As I'm working my hand around the cylinder to straighten out the wick, watch what's happening in the inside. And see that? Everything's nice, tight, and circular the way it's supposed to be, okay? That is good. Okay, now come down below, Shaylee. Okay, now the wick is sliding over, okay? It's sliding over the cylinder, okay? And I'm just gonna gently guide it. Now, I have wing nuts that have to go back on this, so I have to make sure that I'm lining up all of the holes with where the link, the wing nut bolts are supposed to go, okay? It's a process. Pay attention, okay? Go ahead and let go, Gus. Dun. All right, now the wick is on. The assembled piece is back on. Everything is over the wing nuts. I'm gonna wipe my hands. Okay, thank you for your help. Go wash your hands, buddy. Now that your wick is in, you wanna test your shut off before you tighten everything down, okay? So hit the button and make sure the wick went all the way down. And you can double check yourself by turning this knob and making sure there's nowhere else for the wick to go. So put it up, send it down. We are in great shape. So now I'm gonna put the wing nuts back on and tighten everything down. So I put the wing nuts in my pocket so I know where all my stuff is. I have to pull the knob off of the heater again because I have to be able to slide the cover back on so that's why I'm going to take this knob off okay it is tilted and then I have to clear the battery door back there and there we go and it just sits there there's nothing that is holding this on it just kind of slides into place okay put your knob back on okay and now I'm just going to give it another test to make sure that the wick is good and it's all the way up, it's all the way down. All the way up, all the way down. Now that that is done, I'm going to put this cover piece right here so I don't forget that goes on. I'm gonna grab my glow plug this is real easy. Don't ever let this glow plug intimidate you, okay? Shaylee's gonna get real close here with the camera. Okay, this glow plug, it's a light push and turn, and it'll slide out for you, okay? So I'm just gonna show you again, okay? So in order to get it out, you're just gonna push it in slightly, turn it, pull it out. That's it, that's all there is to it, okay? So, the old one we're gonna set aside. And I'm gonna grab my new one. And boy, is she new. Okay, be real careful when you're putting this in. Don't put too much pressure on it because you don't wanna break anything, okay? And the same thing, we're gonna slide it in. It's like a little spring-loaded contraption in there, okay? Slide it in, turn it to lock it. There you go. Okay, now I'm gonna test it to make sure that it's moving, everything is moving the way it's supposed to. So, the red button is the igniter button. That is how you start your heater automatically using the batteries, okay? So I'm gonna turn this button to the right. Look at that glow. 
Okay, now that we know the glow plug is in perfect working order, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put the tray back on. It's only gonna go on one way, folks, so make sure you're just lining it up. And push it down. Okay, I'm going to test this quick one more time. Because I want to make sure that everything is in perfect working order. Wick is up. Hit the button. It is down. It is down all the way. It's not going to go any farther. Okay, now that the tray is on, all I have to do is put the cage back on. Put in my two bolts. This is, it doesn't really get any easier than that. It's uh, pretty simple. I mean, you could take the cage all apart, you know, disassemble every last little piece. I mean, if you needed to clean it or anything like that, I am literally just replacing that with today. Okay. Now, this is the part that everybody forgets. You just put a brand new wick in there. So you have to let your heater sit for one hour. And the reason we do this is to give that wick a chance to absorb all of the kerosene. If you just insert a wick and you go and you fire it right up, you are doing yourself a disservice and you're going to find yourself tearing it all apart because you just ruined a wick um, because there's no kerosene on it yet. So let it sit for an hour, let the kerosene travel up and once that hour's uh, done, take it outside, start it up, burn it for like 10-15 minutes outside um, and you are ready to go. Thank you so much for watching this video for me. I tried to make it as quick and painless as possible. If you've done this before, this was probably a great refresher for you. If you are brand new to kerosene heaters and you felt I went a little too fast for you, I do have another one where it is literally step-by-step -step Barney style. I encourage you to go check that one out if you need it. Thank you for watching today and I hope you guys found this helpful and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye now.